Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy, and it is March, and our March special on both what we're going to discount for you and what we're going to educate you on is poop. So we're going to start right at the beginning. Now, I really didn't want to deal with poop, so we actually got some treats here that look like little turd nuggets, and we're going to show you how you collect a poop sample. So let's pretend that our little Shih Tzu pooped on the floor. This is so simple. You don't need gloves. You don't need anything. You just take your Ziploc baggie. You turn it inside out on your hand. Pick up the poop. We've all done this before. We don't need a lot of poop. You do not need to bring in the entire log. We only need the size of one or two Hershey Kisses. So this is all the poop we need. We don't need a lot. It's really important that you label your pet's poop. So my dog is... We will say this is Rodney. So I'm going to put Rodney's name on it. And I'm going to put the date. Now, if it's the weekend and you get your poop on Sunday and bring it Monday, that's fine. But we really like fresh within a day or two. So once we have your sample, we're going to do two different things. So there's two different tests that we do at Marshall Animal Clinic on poop. One of them is a fecal float and a Giardia antigen test. So this is actually testing for intestinal parasites, whipworms, roundworms, hookworms. Um, Giardia is actually a protozoa, it's not a worm, and we see that a lot. Now because it's not shed at a constant rate in the feces, it's kind of shed intermittently, we don't always see it on a, on a float. But it's stop laughing at me, Alyssa. <laughs> Linnae walked in the background. <laughs> okay. so. But as the Giardia dies, little pieces of the Giardia are shed in the poop, and the antigen test picks that up. So like the COVID test that we've all been taking the last three years, they're antigen tests. So we get that one back positive. The reason we're so concerned about Giardia is people can get it, and you're gonna love the name of it. Beaver fever. Yes, the reason Giardia is called beaver fever is because way back when, um, trappers as they were moving across northern um, North America, they would get Giardia and it would cause terrible diarrhea. And they thought they were getting it from the beavers they were trapping, but they weren't, they were drinking the water. So I could talk about beaver fever all day, but I'm not going to. So back to the poop. <laughs> so we actually don't do the fecal tests in house. We send them off to a lab and um, we actually transfer your poop into this little container. We stick it in our fridge in a FedEx box, and FedEx comes and takes it away every day. We have, we have results the next day, unless there's a weather event. So the other test that we do at the clinic, um, that if your pet's ever had diarrhea or upset belly, we do is a fecal smear. So we take some of the poop. This is our poop station. <laughs> um, and we get a microscope slide and a little cotton swab and we take a little bit of the poop we rub it on the slide real thin come over and we have these stains and it's been a busy day so these are all the different slides we've done this is actually a poop smear um, that someone did earlier in the day but we put them in special stain and then we look under the microscope so i'm going to see if i can see anything let's actually see what's under here Oh my goodness, I think this might be poop right here. Does anyone know about this slide? So I'm looking at this slide and I think it's poop because it looks like poop. Poop under the microscope that's been stained with our special stain should have all sorts of variety. There should be little bacteria, little cocci, little rods, big rods. Um, there should be chains, there should be quads. It should be a nice uniform mix of different colors. Our stain is purple and pink. But if we look at a slide like this and we look under the microscope, and there is way more pairs of cocci, big cocci than any, anything else. We know that that's a bacterial overgrowth. The bacteria have gotten out of, out of whack. Now the most common one that we see is an overgrowth of clostridium. We see that literally every day here. The only way to know is to look under the microscope. So if your dog has diarrhea, is having GI issues and you don't bring a poop sample, all we can do is an educated guess. No one wants to do that. We want to pick the right medication, treat your pet right off the bat.
So depending on what we see, we decide what we're going to do. And um, that's why poop is so important. So I'm pretty sure um, if you're watching this and it is March 2023, um, we have an oh shit special. And I think that the fecal test, the one that we send off to the lab um, to look for parasites, I think that's on sale for how much? $25. $25. Mm -hmm. So this is important. In fact, a lot of kennels require it. If you've had a dog with any chronic issues, it's really smart to do. The other thing is um, if you have little kids, a lot of the worms that dogs and cats have are actually zoonotic and contagious to children. The statistics, I don't know them off the top of my head, um, but one of the more recent ones I remember is 300 children go blind every year because roundworms migrate through their corneas. So it's almost always fecal oral. Kids pet the puppies, there's microscopic eggs on their fur, then eat a cookie without washing their hands. So. Um, a lot of these things that we test in poop are potentially hazard to humans, especially children. So, anything else about poop we need to talk about, Alyssa? Mm -mm. Uh, we could talk about poop forever. <laughs> yeah, forever. So, thanks.